Hey there everyone, welcome to Ask Me Monday. I'm Vicki Howell, coming at you as I do three Mondays of every month, courtesy of Knitter's Pride, or Knit Pro if you are out of the US. So it's so good to see um, you here and start the week out creatively. I'm coming at you from the Yarnier Studios in Austin, Texas. I would love to know where you're watching from. Um, and I also would love to know how you are being creative right now, what you're making, what's inspiring you, what are you scrolling through and saying, I have got to make that. Um, how have you been spending your time creatively? I, uh, I spent the weekend mostly working on a Yarnier project for July, and I'll talk a little bit more about Yarnier in a bit. Um, and then I tried a failed attempt at painting a rope basket and it just didn't didn't work but um but yeah had a good time did some crocheting just hung out so it's good to see you if you are here if you're watching the replay and not with us live and you're really only here for the demonstration you can just fast forward until you see my hands in the meantime hi janine from ohio uh chris as always great to see you in sacramento and valerie from just up the street in new Bronzeville's. um and sue in somerset massachusetts oh barbara good to see you New Jersey um, and we've got Janine she's needle felting and knitting awesome and don't forget if you have um, if you have patterns that you like that you think people will dig come back and post them in the comment section if there's a recipe like if you're on like the bread train now and you have a great recipe post it in the comment section um, if you you know saw something on Instagram that you think is beautiful that inspired you post it in the comment section these videos and these comments, uh, this section down here is supposed to be your community boards. Um, if we were in different times, I would say, try to get together with each other if you see people pop up in your hood, but now maybe just, just touch base virtually, a little, a little wave or, or what have you. Alrighty, so this week what we are going to be doing, it has been 10 years since my book that I co-wrote with Adrian Armstrong, Aware Knits. If you are in the UK, it's Knit Pearl, save the world if you're in finland it's got a totally different um title this is this was the title that taught us that you cannot use puns to name your books because they don't translate to other uh, cultures or languages lesson learned so anyways this is the book awareness and it's our 10 year anniversary uh, had just passed um not too long ago as i mentioned so i thought it would be that on top of the fact that we've got father's day coming up would be a really good time to revisit one of the patterns from it um, that in here was called Typhoon because it was all um, environment related, but I'm just calling a knit skinny tie. Um, and so we are going to focus on this today, just a clean, classic, skinny tie. So this is great for maybe Father's Day. Not all dads, this is going to be their jam, but um, there's also like the menswear, stereotypically menswear look is really hot and chic for uh, in the women's world now. Now that gender norms are changing too, there really are no definitions about who can wear this. My daughter Clover, who refuses to come on camera today, is in the studio with me. Hi. She, she said hi, but can you hear? Um, she loves her the menswear look. Um, and so this is something that you can make for yourself or for dad for Father's Day, or you can just hang out with us. So let me get closer because it's in black. I like black. Um, but you can do it in any color. Um, and this is just really great texture. Um, and it's a simple pattern. I've put it up for free for everyone, thanks to the support of Knitter's Pride, and that is at vickihowell.com. You'll also see links to all of the tools that I talk about and what I made sure to do this time, why I haven't done that all the time, we don't know, um, is link to every single stitch that I talk about. I link to an individual tutorial that I've done for that. So if you're brand new, people are calling for you to peek in, Clover. If you're brand new to knitting, then um, you can totally take this on. If you have been knitting forever, then you're gonna be able to trend these out. Clover, would you wear a tie? Yes. Yes? Yes. You, you usually like to wear it with like a- um, My blazer. With a blazer. She's got like a little, like a kind of 80s inspired blazer that you roll up the sleeves mm -hmm. and you'll do like a tuxedo legging or pant, little tie, either skinny tie or bow tie. Super fun. All right, peace out. I'm going to keep teaching. Um, <laughs> so what I thought I would do, so I'm offering the pattern for free, as I said. Um, if, you, if you already have awareness, then you are a step ahead of everyone else. And um, 
if this is a new, if knitting is new to you, you can give it a try. For those of you that are crocheters, I think this would also work beautifully with half double crochet. And you'll see when I'm teaching how to get started for this project, how easy it would be to translate it, translate it into crochet rather. All right, so let's talk about yarns for this project. So this, the yarn for this that I originally designed this in was one of my old, my very first yarn line. Um, and it was a line called Rock. It was Southwest Trading Company and it was a worsted weight hemp blend. Doesn't exist anymore, but what I do like is if you can choose, so you, any worsted weight will work. But if you can find something that has a, um, a linen in it or some kind of like bamboo and silk blend, even a cotton blend, those will work really great. Something that has just a little touch of stiffness to give it that body is a really great idea um, for these projects. And if you have something like this is a yarn that I featured in Yarn Yay a few months ago that I really love. It's cotton and linen. It's from Kelburn Woolens. It is not thick enough, but doubled it totally would be. So have fun, play with it. Um, and obviously the linens and the bamboos and the silks sort of evoke more of a summer warm weather feeling. So if, you're if you are making this for Father's Day, maybe go that way. If you're saving it later for Christmas, you could totally do a wool or a wool blend. Um, so what I'm gonna focus on today is because it is pretty much a straight piece, the only difference is the points um, and how we're going to get to those points is we are going to be increasing in seed stitch. So that is what I will be showing you how to do. All right, so I'm gonna flip around the camera. This will be our first flip in the studio. So let's see how that goes and we'll move on from there. All right, as you can see, the weird painted lights traveled with me. All righty, let me get set up here. I think that looks okay. All right, I'm gonna get scooch things out of the way. So all you need is one, about 100, 110 yards of worsted weight. You can use straights, you can use DPNs, you can use circulars. Because it's such a thin piece, whoa, sorry about that. Because it's such a thin piece, I often will choose and in fact, I think that's what I'm gonna do this time. These are the Smart Sticks by Knitter's Pride and you can measure as you go along with them. So I always like working with those. But because this is such a small piece and we're starting with only two stitches cast on, I think I'm gonna open up my um, handy dandy Knitter's Pride uh, ginger double pointed set and grab just two US 7s 4.5 millimeters. And we actually just restocked these at yarnier.com too. So. I love them. All right, so let me move that out of the way. So what we are going to be focusing on, as I mentioned at the beginning, is just getting started. So we are starting from the tip and you work on up. So to do so, all you need to do, and I'm just using some random worsted weight yarn that I had. Again, if you missed it, rewind a little bit to see what the recommendations are, or also just go to vickihall.com where I've also put them. All right, so you're gonna start by casting on two stitches. The type of cast on you use does, does not really matter, but with anything that is not going to be inside of a seam, I always um, suggest not going with just the simple E cast on, like just the simple loop. It's not going to be hardy enough. So you can use the single tail cast on, the long tail cast on. Um, again, I've linked to this stuff in, uh, in the post at vickihell.com. So I'm going to start by just simply casting on two stitches. Oh, and I have to remember, I have a story about why this tie got designed and I was gonna tell that at the top, I'll tell it at the bottom of the show. Okay, so to begin, all you're going to do, so this is worked in seed stitch. Seed stitch, as, as just a refresher, is just the combination of knits and purls alternating every row. So it's almost like a checkerboard of texture. So we are going to begin on row one with two stitches. By not pulling off your cast off stitch, cast on stitch. Okay, we are going to knit one 
and then purl one. Flip over. So that was row one. That was it. So now we want to do the next one is you want to do the opposite of what the stitch reads. So this is a knit, this is a purl, but when you flip it over, it's hard to see with only one stitch, this is actually going to be a knit and this is going to be a purl. So you want to do the opposite. I know that's so weird, but the pattern is written and you'll be able to see. So then we're going to purl one, knit one. Okay, so we've got our little tip and now what we need to do is we need to start increasing. And so this is really what I wanted to teach you today. I want to teach you how to increase in seed stitch. So to do that, we are going to purl in the first stitch, but leave it on the needle, move our yarn back, and knit in that exact same stitch. So we've just created seed stitch um, within one stitch and increased at the same time. We are going to repeat that exact same thing, move our yarn forward, purl in the next stitch, leave it on, knit in the last one. And now you should have a total of four stitches. You have just, um, you have just increased, doubled your stitches. And then on the way back, on all of the wrong side rows for, for this project, you will just work seed stitch straight all the way back. Okay, now, that's all you need to know to keep increasing, but I'd love to show you again. We are then going to increase using seed stitch also, but this time it'll be the reverse. It is knit one, purl one in that first stitch. Knit one, purl one, and then you work in seed stitch all the way around. And if you forget where you are, you can always read the stitches. Let's see if you can tell with the gray. I probably should have used a lighter color. You can see that this is a purl stitch because it has that little scarf on it. So you know that you need to do the opposite for seed stitch. Purl one. And then you, at the very end, you knit one, purl one. In the last stitch, and now you're on to six. And you would just lather, rinse, repeat. I'm gonna flip it over. Let's see, purl, knit, purl. I always count backwards. I, you can also read the pattern, fancy that. But if ever you're in seed stitch and you don't know what you're supposed to do, I just find the one that looks the most obvious. Like this is obviously a knit stitch, so I know I have to purl it. So I work backwards. Because sometimes in the increased stitches, because they're essentially just cast on almost, they're a little bit harder to read. So purl, knit, purl. Okay, so I know. You just purl here, and then you just work all the way across. All right, and then just as the pattern calls for, and that, again, that's at vickihell.com, you'll keep increasing until you get to, um, I believe it's maybe 12 stitches, and then you will just continue on until, um, you know, as, as long as the pattern calls for, for the length that you need until you start narrowing. Now, when you start narrowing, you just need to know how to do two simple decreases. This is probably a refresher for most of you, but um, let me just go ahead and show you just in case. And again, I have linked to individual tutorials for each of these stitches within the pattern. So let's just pretend we've knit, 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 and now it's time on a right side to do our decreases. So the first one is an SSK, which is slip, slip, knit. Knit through the back loop. And then you work in seed stitch to the last two, and then knit two together. The knit two together slants right, the SSK slants left, that will give you this really nice narrowing shape. And you can see a little bit more how much skinnier we get. And that's so that you have the backside that will fit really nicely once you've tied the tie. Um, and that's really it. So Stacy's saying, 
knit and back loop twice. Oh, you know what? I'm reading the wrong thing and taking off. Okay. So anyways, that's knit two together. And again, at vickihowell.com, you can find the pattern courtesy of the support of Knitter's Pride. All right. I'm going to flip around again. Hello again. All right. So this is just a fun little thing um, that you can make, like I said, for dad. Um, or for yourself. I, I mean, I personally like a clean like t-shirt, maybe like a band t-shirt and some skinny jeans, blazer, it's kind of hot. I kind of dig it. So um, have fun and uh, give it a try. Now, what would I do if I wanted to crochet? I would probably, I would, I would have double crochet. And so let's just do a quick talk through this. I realize it's not a pattern, but I would for, I'd probably forgo the seed stitch. You can do it um, in crochet, but I think it would look really nice in half double crochet. So I would half double crochet two, and then at, at either side, I would do two half double crochets on both ends, work straight back, two more, work straight back for the same amount of rows that you would see in the knit pattern. Um, and that's really all there is to it. I think it would look really, really cool. So I said I would tell the story about, um, about this tie, so back when I first met Adrian, um, the reason I met her is because my husband was a big Green Day fan and I was naming colors for my very first yarn line um, that was through Southwest, Southwest Trading Company. Um, and one of the lines, as I mentioned at the top, is called Rock. So I named all of the colors after Rockstar, like red was Gwen after Gwen Stefani's lipstick um, and green was after Billy Joe from Green Day. And it was written up in a magazine and Adrian saw it and she ended up reaching out to me and we ended up becoming uh, dear friends and writing this book together. But before we wrote the book together, she said that she wanted to knit Billy Joe um, a skinny tie. And, I, and I, she said, do you have a pattern? And I was like, oh no, but I'll do it. And so she and I made these ties for our husbands for Valentine's Day that year. That was 12 years ago, maybe a long time ago. But it's just one of those things it's a really lovely memory um you know knitting along together and we didn't live in the same state as especially is especially poignant right now um knitting, knitting along together virtually is so important and it really just helps strengthen relationships and stuff so that is what i have to say about that all right that is it for this week. Um, we will not be, we will not have a show next week. Um, so we'll be back June 15th, but I will also be back here this week, June 3rd, Wednesday at noon, live on Facebook and YouTube for the June Yarnier reveal. So just as a big, just as a quick recap, if you don't know what Yarnier is, Yarnier is uh, my business that includes a subscription club. Um, I deliver little bits of yarny goodness from me to you. And I always do a an unpacking where I reveal it on the third of the month. So I'm really excited um, about the company, uh, the yarn company that we're supporting. Um, well, all of the companies that we're supporting, but the yarn, um, I can't wait to share that with you. So be sure to tune in here. Uh, which is either YouTube or Facebook at noon central time on June 3rd. All right, that is all I have to say about that. Please take some time to be creative, be kind to each other. Um, remember when you're knitting and crocheting, you're putting something positive out in the world. Bye.